the rainy season in Zambia is a very beautiful time of the year. The earth turns green, birds are singing. But this is the time of the year when the mosquitoes return. It's been stated that mosquitoes are the most dangerous animals on earth. Nagajiswa, How do we fight one of the most complicated and dangerous diseases in the world? At the time of the millennium, the gift from Michael Bloomberg allowed Johns Hopkins to create a malaria research institute. Our goal is to use this magnificent gift to expand the horizons, to knock down and eventually eliminate malaria. This is the most potent anti-malaria activity ever put together. Our three main approaches are to do battle with the parasite, to genetically disarm the mosquitoes, and to study malaria in the field to detect drug resistance, insecticide resistance, so that we can put it all together. The mission of my laboratory is to understand the early stages of malaria infection because this is the best target for a vaccine. We have visualized the injection process and what the parasites do in the skin. Between 10 and 100 parasites are injected by a mosquito. That's a pretty low number. Now in the liver, they develop and multiply and you end up with 250 billion parasites in your blood. Our point of view is that it's much easier to attack this parasite with a vaccine when it's at the injection site. Our data is suggesting that this is the time because it's much easier to kill 100 parasites than it is to kill 250 billion. This is like fighting a war. You can't win a war with one weapon alone. Since the establishment of the Johns Hopkins Malaria Research Institute, great advances have been made. We have developed several genetically modified mosquito strains. We isolated specific genes of the mosquito and injected them into mosquito embryos. Now, when we feed these mosquitoes on malaria-infected blood, the parasite makes it to the mosquito gut, and then it's killed right there rendering these mosquitoes incapable of transmitting it further. Until now, we have been studying our genetically modified mosquitoes in a laboratory environment, which is very different from that in the field where malaria is transmitted. There's a lot of cutting edge work being done at Hopkins on how to attack the mosquito side of it. Once they get to a certain point there, that experiment has to be moved over to an area that's in the real world where there is malaria transmission. We heard about this concept of a mosquito house, which would allow us to expand our work, not just in a little small little box, but in a natural environment. And then would use those to do various experiments, like to see if bed nets were still effective. Here in Matcha, we have a very active field team that go out almost every day. So our work begins when we receive that text message report from the health facility. That shows that there's been cases at that facility and prompts a follow-up by our field team. And having that point geolocated with a GPS also allows us to superimpose that on satellite imagery and pick up environmental risk factors around that case. This prompts a follow-up by our field team. 
and will go out to that household where the case has been. They screen the people for malaria, collect blood samples, and also set light traps for mosquitoes. Those blood samples will be processed in the lab to check the malaria. When people came to know that malaria is a curable disease, if you come to hospital, many lives were saved. I really actually interested to have my hand in saving people's lives. We had a lot of malaria here up through about 2003. And then with Hopkins' help here in around 2003, 2004, we started being much more aggressive. And that's when we suddenly just saw a dramatic drop in cases. This is far from perfect, but it is a beginning. It's the first real beginning the malaria community has ever had. Most recently, we have a vaccine candidate that for the first time we have seen efficacy in malaria endemic areas in children. We have developed mosquito strains that are resistant to the malaria parasite. The challenge now is how do you replace the mosquitoes that transmit malaria in Africa with these new genetically modified malaria-resistant mosquitoes? Malaria actually took my young brother. I'm hoping that by the time my children will grow up like me, malaria in Zambia will be actually to zero percent. This institution is working to save people's lives. And my mother was very proud of that. I understand now that he died physically, but spiritually, he's still surviving. And I hope we'll meet one day in heaven. He may appreciate the work I'm doing right now. Worldwide, the malaria burden has declined by about half the number of deaths. The Johns Hopkins Malaria Research Institute has generated a number of discoveries and observations, and the progress has been substantial, but the challenges remain. Until malaria is gone everywhere, it could return. I'm very convinced that in the end it will be eliminated, but our efforts need to continue. <laughs>